You know, freight trains are a pretty common sight where I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I've grown up watching them, but one thing that still amazes me is just how long they are. And honestly, they're just getting longer. Every time a freight train passes, I wonder about its total length. So one cloudy day, I decided to see if I could get an idea of just how far one modern freight train stretched. This one was stopped in Atlanta's Oakland City neighborhood, just south of downtown. My guess is that it was headed to Norfolk Southern's industry yard a few miles away in East Point. But for now, it was stopped at a red signal. Before we start measuring, let's take a look at some of this train's features. First of all, it's led by a single EMD SC70 ACC. This diesel electric locomotive was rebuilt by Progress Rail and converted to use alternating current traction motors instead of direct current. These are easy to spot because of their distinctive wide nose cabs. Now let's take a look at the train itself. The auto racks which carry cars and light trucks go on as far as the eye can see. And here's the midsection of the train. This locomotive is what the railroad calls a distributed power or DP unit. It's another DC to AC conversion. These DP units use a radio link to the head and locomotive to receive throttle and braking commands. By distributing the motive power in the middle or on the end of a train, the forces on the draft gears and couplers are reduced. Just think about all the forces those draft gears and couplers are subjected to on a heavy train. Adding a mid-train DPU to help push and pull can help reduce those forces and also enable railroads to run longer trains. It can also help maintain air pressure. Now that's a very simplified explanation, but hopefully it gets the point across. So that's a DP unit, but we've got more train to look at. Headed down the road a little bit, we're now in a different part of Atlanta, an area called Castleberry Hill. You can see the train didn't quite clear the crossing at McDaniel Street. But of course drivers don't seem to care, they're going around the gates. This is a good time to take a quick look at this device attached to the last coupler on the train. It's called an EOT or end of train device. To get an even closer look, let's look at this EOT that's mounted on a different train. One of its main functions is to monitor the train's air pressure. These devices can even apply the brakes in an emergency. They also have special sensors to detect which way the train is moving or if it's stopped. This information is all transmitted back to the lead locomotive through radio signals. You can even hear them on your scanner, but good luck decoding them. Probably the simplest function of an EOT is a flashing red light that comes on when it gets dark. Some devices even have small turbines that use air pressure to keep the electronics inside powered. Of course, these small boxes were just one of the advances that spelled the end for the caboose. All right, that's a broad overview of some of the features of this train. Now, let's start measuring. We're going to use Google Earth Pro for this. It's free to download. And let me just say right now, this is purely for fun and not the most scientific way to do this. I think Google Earth is a great visual aid to help us get an idea of the amount of distance we're covering here. I should also say the train crew will know how long their train is, but that's probably pretty obvious. With that information out of the way, let's get going. Okay, we've got the Google Earth satellite view of Atlanta up now, so let's take a look at a few landmarks and then find where this freight train was stopped. So first of all, to our northwest, we've got Norfolk Southern's Inman Yard, and then going southeast of there, you can see downtown Atlanta. This is Mercedes-Benz Stadium, of course, with the Mercedes logo on the roof. And then if we go south of here, you can see Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. So we're going to be looking for this train basically between the airport and downtown Atlanta. So I'm going to go ahead and start zooming in. You can see Industry Yard. That's where I think the freight train was headed. And then uh, going up the line here a little bit, you can see that um, we've also got another rail line, which is the MARTA elevated line here. And then, of course, Norfolk Southern and CSX trains both travel down this uh, part of the, the line here. All right, so here's the signal bridge where the red signal was, and then going up a little bit more, they were stopped just short of this crossing here at Sylvan Road. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the ruler tool, and I'm gonna use the path function here. And we're gonna go ahead and measure this in feet, and we're gonna start putting points down. Now I use the path function because this is not gonna be a straight shot, there are some uh, broad curves here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark a spot here 
and we're just going to start plotting points here along the rail line. And we're finally at our crossing where we saw that the train was partially blocking that crossing. So we're basically got it all measured out here. So let's take a look at what we found. So looking at this, we can see that it was, at least my rough estimate using the ruler tool here, um, 8,333 feet, um, well, 0.99 feet. So there's that, let's convert it to miles, um, inches. I don't know if we wanna do that, that would be a lot. Miles, so 1.58, so a little bit more than one and a half miles long. That's pretty long, but freight trains can be even more massive than this. In 1967, Norfolk Southern's predecessor, Norfolk and Western, ran a coal train that was four miles long and weighed more than 48,000 tons. And believe it or not, an Australian train was even longer than that. In 2001, mining company BHP ran an iron ore train that was more than four and a half miles long and weighed nearly 100,000 tons. Back in Atlanta, this train is not a record breaker, but it really shows us the tonnage the railroads are capable of moving. 